Hey, what's going on, Robert? Hey, thank Russ. You. I'd like to thank you for uh, coming on the show. No You've been problem. having problems getting people on the show. You remember I asked you, I don't know, a year ago. <laughs> I never said no, did I? No, you said yeah, yeah. but I wasn't ready. Yeah. We've been through a few trials and errors, so now we're kicking it off. and. Uh, yeah, you're our second interview, and mm -hmm. I'm glad it, I wish you would have been my first, but, <laughs> you know, I'm glad you came on. Well, thanks, Russ. Yeah, so, every, I'm sure everybody watching the show knows who you are, you know. Some, not the, not the youngins. Yeah, man, but they could, they should ask some of the elders, and they'll, <laughs> they'll know a little bit more about our history, but all the people who have something to do with the history, we know who you are. Well, um... You know, we were a pure one stop from 1976 to 1990. Mm -hmm. Never did, never distributed anything. There's, a, you know, the difference. Uh, you know, if you're a one stop, you always you buy from the majors, and you can return everything you buy. Yeah. Uh, so, so the distribution game is a little bit different. You know, I never really wanted to get into it until my brother came in one day and said. Hey Robert, we got one of our customers, Russell. He got a cassette single he wants us to sell, and, I, and we had it. We argued about it. I said we don't want to do that. No, no way. And uh, I said, you know what happens is, Russell. What he's going to do is he's going to go around to all the record stores, mm -hmm. and he's going to give them to them. He's going to sell them to them on consignment, and then he's going to have us distributing it. And so they're all going to send it back to us. You know, since we're distributing it they can send it back to us that's mm -hmm. what's going to happen and that's what i that's what i thought and uh but boy i was wrong <laughs> yes uh it was a lot of people wrong about that record i had a tough time with that record mm -hmm. i think it was a little a little hard for people at first you know the language and stuff but i always liked that record from day one mm -hmm. and, you know uh, you were the uh you, you you saw it and a lot of people a lot of people didn't. I remember when they finally brought it up and played it for me, I said, that's terrible. <laughs> yeah, that's terrible. Y'all sure we have to carry this? Yeah. And we saw, you know, uh, my recollection, you, you might think, was that we sold 60,000 yeah. cassette singles in about two and a half, three months. Yeah, that's about, yeah, that was about right there. And, we were, and if I knew more <laughs> of what I know now, I would have never stopped pressing it until Jive was going to yeah. release it because they basically, they robbed us of a lot of money because they was like, oh, take it off press and it's going to mm -hmm. turn over. And I think, I don't remember, it took a lot of months before they actually put that revised record out. It and, was, uh, I, I've, that was the first thing I've ever seen like that. <laughs> you know, maybe five or six other ones as, as the years went on, you know, Southside, Want to Be a Baller, mm -hmm. uh, we, you know, we were gone before uh, Still Tipping, yeah. probably just like that. Uh, of course, before all of that, and we didn't distribute it, was uh, Minds Playing Tricks. Oh, wow. That was, uh, those were, you know, there's, you know, five or six records that w we remember that were, ended up being platinum records yeah. for, for majors. Yeah. It was fun, it was, it was a lot of fun. We yeah, had, it was. Everybody at our place, we had over 200 employees, uh, and uh, everybody, everybody was excited. Mm -hmm. uh, when, we, when we had a hot record. Yeah, I was always excited every hot record. I, yeah. I love the informant. <laughs> yeah, Just oh, yeah. to get it and say, see where your record is. It's, well, the informant, um, you know, all the uh, chains, Musicland, Sam Goody, all those, they, uh, every, all the managers would say, we look for the informant, we don't look at the billboard. Mm -hmm. Because the informant is what is happening in our area. Yeah. And we, uh, it was very popular. Um, I think I had one. I think I still have one in storage. <laughs> I think I had posted it one day and it, it got a lot of likes. People were like, they remember it. I mean, that's history. The little music note logo, mm -hmm. I mean, Southwest Wholesale. You know, we paid, uh, for that logo, we paid 10 CDs, <laughs> ten, uh, 10 albums at that time. Yeah. Which at the time probably was a lot too. You like, wow, yeah. that's a, Probably you know. eight or 10 bucks a piece. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That, that's still a lot. If, uh, Technically, I think it's a, a music note. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it. Yeah. But it was, it was very iconic. Mm -hmm. A lot of memories. And I, I, I think even when you took the uh, Tell Me Something Good, I think you, you told me it was just a, it was a favor because I buy. Yeah, well, that's, that's what I said. But then, 
you know, about three or four, you know, when I started hearing it on the radio, I started saying, you know, that's, <laughs> it's good. It's, uh, it's, not, it's not a favor, that was good. Yeah. And of course, you know, we learned a whole, it was a whole new business that you, basically, Russell, you introduced us to it. Yeah. That uh, the distribution, um, it had its ups and downs, but it was a lot of fun and we did very well in it. Oh man, there's been some big records that came out of Houston. We, we've had, yeah. but I always wanted to ask you, what is the one record that you missed that you think if you could go well, back? It, you, you, I, you, well, I can't say since it was on rap a lot, but mine's playing tricks. I wish we had been distributing back then. Oh man. And, and could have done that one. Um, uh, you know, some of the guys, a few guys was signed with majors. You know, uh, I was surprised. We never even heard of Destiny's Child until they were already signed and getting big. Yeah. And, uh, but when they, when they came, you know, they came to the warehouse three or four times when they were really young and they were really nice people. Everybody always said, all of our people said, I hope they make it. You know, they weren't, uh, they were really nice people. Yeah. Well, they made it. <laughs> they made it. Yeah, we don't have to worry about them. No, they, I think they, they good. They can always uh, do a little reunion tour and make plenty of money. Yeah. <laughs> One of the biggest stars in the world came from that group, so. Well, right after Tell Me Something Good, I don't remember, I really don't know my uh, chronology that well, but, uh, you know, we had the, uh, the RP Cola. I like that RP Cola. And Tell Me Something Good, and that was a funny one with uh, the record label. You know, he was going, you know, he was going and it was getting hotter and hotter. And then we kept on saying, Eddie, you got that song cleared? You got it cleared? You got it cleared? Mm -hmm. And it kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And then one day Eddie said, I had to stop selling it. <laughs> Phil Collins said, no way he would ever do a rap, let anybody use his music on a rap song. Hmm. And, uh, but it was, it was funny, you know, Eddie would come in with a, I don't know who his investors were, but uh, he would come in with a garbage sack full of cash. <laughs> you know, all wadded, bills all wadded up. And uh, he, he would say, this is, he said, I told him I needed some money to promote it. And then he brought me the bag of cash. <laughs> I can tell you, I wonder what kind of work they did. Yeah. The bags of cash. <laughs> <laughs> but another interesting point is why uh, once Eddie uh, he realized our, uh, Phil Collins is gonna uh, he's letting Bone Thugs and stuff and singing songs. Why didn't he just try and double back and clear it? You know, I, I you know I used to tell him I said you know Eddie if James Prince had that song it would have been number one mm -hmm. on the on the pop charts because he wasn't gonna you know he he wasn't gonna be intimidated at all. No, not at all. So. And then that's one thing about music. It is, uh, it is definitely a game of uh, you got to be strong to your convictions and hold mm -hmm. in because just when you give up, something can turn on you. Mm -hmm. I remember how close I had Bun to signing a solo deal uh -huh. right when uh, we was having our problems. And I remember I went to the club and I said, man, I still want you to do that solo. Mm -hmm. And he asked me, you know, what you talking about big time? And I mm -hmm. shot a number and I, and I saw the interest, but that was before all of the birds was chirping him. Yeah. I would have got that solo way earlier. Didn't you, uh, you signed them by putting a sign, well, how did you put a sign in your record store? Yep, I put a sign up. I said, I'm looking for a group. <laughs> <laughs> and the first one walked in was Pimp. The second one was uh, Tiny from uh, the Sex Fingers. Wow. So I would have, I would have did all right even if I would have did that record. Because yeah. I like, they wasn't talking about the stuff they talk about now, but mm -hmm. they, they were pretty good. And I was trying to do them both at the same time. And uh, yeah, I wasn't ready for that. But the crazy part was I got Blank. Remember Blank handed oh, yeah. me a, a tape that was done and I didn't have to do nothing but pay the producers and put it out. And I mean, that record wasn't UGK's record, but it was a good record. It was decent. It was a good, good record. I had a particular favorite on that one it's and I don't know if it was that record or not it's hard to think when oh, your mind goes blank that's off the second one. I think I think screw made that took that to another level uh -huh. you know I mean because he missed it with a I, I don't know what the, a Leah beat or something mm -hmm. and uh, it just went to another level and it, it was a, it was a good song it's still cool now and you know you know, one he, of my favorite songs from Blank. He was right, uh, Blank, I, I'm not sure where he grew up, but I think he was right, must have been right in my neighborhood, because he's mm -hmm. talking about 
Reed Road and and his songs. And you know, I grew up. I'm South Park. Mm -hmm. I grew up on the corner of Heron and Northdale. No. And Reed Road was the very next street over. So I, I always had a real special place in my heart for the South Side. <laughs> and 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 really, you know, we had done one stop business. We we had done consecutive sales. Uh, we opened in 1976. Better sales every year till 91. And the, but then when I started doing distribution, it was just it was it, it was so great. It was the underdog. Mm -hmm. These guys, you know, they're as good as anybody in the majors. They're not developing anything. They're, you know, they're waiting to see what pops off and a lot of it down here. Yeah. You know, they're waiting to see and then they're jumping on it. And um, I wish if I'd had a little more experience and a little more clout with the guys that we maybe could have got them some better deals mm -hmm. and signed, signed more of them. Yeah. But, um, it was like, uh, it was new to all of us though. We all, it, yeah. it went fast too when you think about it. It, it was like a couple of years and then the whole chain, it, it, everything changed. Yeah. And then Screw came along and all those guys off of that was that. Oh man. I think you said before that if you was on the Screw tape, you was, you was. That's how, uh, you know, everybody used to say, Robert, he's just, you know, passing out money to everybody. Well, <laughs> it's not like that at all. You know, I knew, I learned real quick. If, if you were on a screw tape, a, if you were really not a screwed tape, but a DJ screw tape, mm -hmm. if you were on there, you were going to sell at least five, 10,000 copies. Yeah. So, you know, if I pay, you know, if I give a guy, you know, if I pay for a thousand up front to help him get his stuff done, his covers and all that, I mean, I did that for everybody. Yeah. And, uh, but as long as they were on a screw tape, uh, you didn't have to worry. ESG, Fat Pat, Botany Boys, um, who else, Russell? Big Mo, Youngster, <laughs> Wood, yeah. Grace, I mean, I think all of them that came out definitely sold a lot, but the, the main ones sold a lot, lot. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know. And Screw himself, and you screw know, that's, I'm guessing we, you know, when it finally came out, uh, the uh, three in the morning, we, we, over 200,000 copies through us. <laughs> Yeah, is what I you know I don't remember exactly, but I don't remember exactly either. Uh, but I know it still it still streams good, and it um you know, and the thing that amazes me is the longevity it's had, and there are no videos. Mm -hmm. it, 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 you know, very little footage of even Screw even doing some of it. You it's, remember Russell when you came and when we would we were doing it professionally. We were you know when we had a record uh, you know we would. We, would, we didn't just put it right out. Mm -hmm. We would build it up, we would take pre-orders. And when we had, uh, you had, it was gonna be two records. Yeah. And we had, we had orders for 40,000 of each. We had a million dollars worth of pre-sales. And then we realized, well, you remember, we both cried. <laughs> we, I think I cried order. No. I remember Mitch and, uh, I forgot the other attorney's name. They was like, you're not gonna kill. I was like, how much can I keep if we put it out? Cause I was almost like, I'll, I'll pull the trigger. Mm -hmm. But then it was like, you're not gonna keep nothing. Mm -hmm. I was like, nothing? And like, nope, everybody gonna hit you for but multiple then, times the damages. And the, and I remember the blood, sweat and tears you went through to actually get the one that did come out. Yeah. And you know what, Russell? I personally think that that was better than the other two. You know, it was. Yeah. But, you know, like they always say, the third time is the charm. He had three tries. He couldn't do nothing but make it better. Yeah, he was a great artist. I, I, you know, I only met him once. When I, you know, I helped, I financed the uh, Fifth Ward soundtrack. Mm -hmm. And Screw put a song on there, and he came, he brought it to me personally. He brought, he, he brought it. You, I think you probably, we didn't see what he, what he really wanted to be. I think he had definitely had aspirations mm -hmm. to do a little production, and he definitely was going to start putting his voice on a little mm -hmm. bit more. He, he had to love it, especially when you're doing shows and you, you got to pay these other guys to rap when they really come to see you. So yeah. I think he was going pretty soon. He would have had enough where he could do his own little show. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that was a little bit. Of, I tell you what, I was real happy with that song. They, and it was him and Al D, I guess, was. Oh, yeah. Al was one Al of the very first. He, you know, I, I, I don't know. Was Al the first one on screw tapes or? I don't know the history. Yeah. I just know he always would say, "Brother, he's on yeah. three in the morning too." I know he's yeah. real. He and Screw, 
uh, went, go way back and were very close. And uh, but uh, man, there was there was nothing like some somebody being on the screw tape. I remember Fat Pat. Oh, you wow. know that was uh, similar. And then he, of course passed away before he even put a record out. Mm -hmm. And that was a, still a big record. It was, it was huge. It was some, there's some, some D I remember stuff in there. D Rec, you know, he was, uh, you, you know, there's just, there's a few of the label guys that really knew how to push it. You know, mm -hmm. of course, you know, uh, rap a lot, of course, but then you were visionary. Uh, D Rec, you know, he was a tough little guy. You know, he knew how to get his stuff out there. Yeah, Rick is very smart too. Mm -hmm. He's a he's a good guy. Mm -hmm. uh, he definitely got a good entrepreneurial eye. Mm -hmm. I remember he he came and talked with me a bunch before he put it out, mm -hmm. and uh, he take me to Bennigan's. So I said, oh, <laughs> I'm getting pimp for information, but I you know I enjoyed it. We all he's still cool to this day. And, you know, uh, his uh, his brother you'd never know it is what he's about five foot ten. <laughs> played in the NFL for ten years. Yeah, wide receiver, right? Wide, wide receiver, yeah. Yeah. Uh, really good guy. Yeah, I never met him personally, but I definitely Floyd. knew he played in there. You know, I, the last time I saw Floyd, I was at uh, House of Pies on Kirby. Oh. And I, you know, I, I bumped into him there. We sat and had breakfast together. Mm -hmm. I guess they had gotten into uh, the uh, bail bonds business. Yeah, I think they have a couple. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, it's been a... That's been a, a big ride, and I, I really miss it. I think a lot of people, a lot of the old guys, when you hear them, they always say what they miss Southwest. It's, mm -hmm. it's um, different. No, some, most, I think most, I don't see why they wouldn't. I mean, no. we were, um, you know, I, I treated everybody as good as I could. Yeah. And, uh, um, you know, it was, it, was a heck, it was a heck of a ride. Yeah, we we were doing uh, you know the all the Texas country music. We helped make that big. We we did uh, the Tejano music. Tejano all music. those guys, gospel. You know, Kerry. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Kerry Douglas. I think Black Smoke, his label, his label, is probably the number one independent gospel record label in the country. He's um, he's, he's got a huge just a huge success yeah so my, it took him a little while to figure it out but uh but he sure did and he, he's one of those guys also like some of the guys knew how to push it yeah. knew how to push to get his stuff out there and played and all that yeah. so do you think uh these days do you do you think that it was better physical or the streaming i know that y'all going to streaming now what do you think? Well, you know, I think for the little guy, it's worse now. Mm. For the big guy, it's the same, or I, I don't know if it's better, but it, it's they can, the big guys still do well. Yeah. But the little guy, it's hard for the little guys to just, you know, they used to be able to sell a few, C, a few CDs, mm -hmm. but uh, now that it's hard to get something streaming. Yeah. I've, you know, I've seen that, so it, it, it's very difficult. But once you get it going, it kind of evens out, yeah. Like like back in the old days. I mean, I I didn't uh, you know that big. We had a sixty thousand square foot warehouse, and I would guess uh, twenty five thousand square feet was product that you know we didn't. Nobody told us how to do distribution, so we were figuring out as we went. The one thing I was f trying to figure out was. What do you do with all this shit that doesn't sell? <laughs> you know, it's it's there, it's stacked up. What do you do with it? You know, it's uh, it takes a lot of space. Yeah, you, you're gonna just throw it away, and then people say, "Oh, this guy will buy it and bolt." Nobody ever did. No. So it was tough. No. I put some stuff on the site for a penny, trying to get <laughs> yeah. rid of it, and people be like, "Oh, yeah, give me give me a hundred. I'm mm -hmm. like, make one dollar. I'm not even gonna ship it. It costs more to ship it." Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's a tough question, still a tough question today. So I guess a lot of people, don't, they don't mind not having to press up all that product and you can stream, you know, even like the screw. Um, it's a million streams a month. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, I would like to press up a million CDs and yeah. sell them and get the money, but 
Yeah, it's, it's a little easier with the stream, but it just seemed like we still get a little bit less. It's like uh, you got to do the group payment and how many people on mm -hmm. the on the membership. A little difficult. I like the five hundred thousand. You got your gold plaque. Now you need seven hundred and fifty million streams yeah. to get it. I'm like, golly, how you get it? Back? <laughs> the big guys get it. Yeah. Little guys, is, you think it's ever gonna come around where the little guy is back in power like he was? Well, I, you know, I don't mean to talk about it, but I, I think uh, I think NFTs mm -hmm. can be a way for uh, the little guy to come back. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't ask me exactly how, but I'm just I'm kind of feeling that market a little bit, feeling it coming on. Um, mm -hmm. So. Um, but that's that's what I think. It's it's you don't have to press them up, and you know, and if if you sell one, you don't lose it. It's there, you know, and you and if it's if uh, I think it'll take over the collector space. Yeah. You know, somebody buys one. What I think they need to do if once they get them uh, affordable for the people on the street, mm -hmm. and don't have to have some kind of crypto wallet or something. When when you can do it without that, I think it's going to really take over because they buy one. They, they sell it, the, whoever put it out, they get paid again. Mm. So it's, it's, a, it's a great collector's market, I, th I think. Yeah, that would be interesting. That would definitely be a way for us to get back if it's uh, turning it into collectibles, because collectibles, they just keep going on and on, and yeah. the value keep going up. Yeah. That's why people are still paying. I went to the, uh, what was it, the Van Gogh little thing. Yeah. All those paintings, and he never, he never sold one. I think he sold one or something. It was something very minimal. And after he gone, people paying two hundred million dollars for. It. You know, Russell. They should, to me, if of all the art, they should have a DJ Screw immersive, mm -hmm. just like that Van Gogh thing. That that's what I think. Yeah, it is a. That'd be interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that'd be definitely interesting. He got he got some he got some material out there. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, definitely enough big people are throwing his name. I think uh, I heard a song today where they said it was all screwed up in the title. I was well, like, oh, okay. People, they say all the top guy, Drake, is a big screw fan. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of, you be, I think we'll be surprised. No, I will be pleasantly and happily surprised. Well, if, if you know, I, I give you a lot of credit. I mean, the, look, look what came out of Houston. Mm -hmm. uh, UGK DJ Screw, you had the vision uh, that uh, in Screw, it's like it it was popular, it kind of faded a little bit, and then it's now it's coming back. Mm -hmm. It's, it's uh, you know it's it's it's, it's really something. Because you can't get nothing as good as the old stuff from Screw. Mm -hmm. You can get something screwed and chopped or slowed down and chopped, you know, but it don't. Ha you listen to a screw, it's a little bit different body of work. It just feels different, mm -hmm. but he's the originator, so that's well, always a good thing. You know, um, Michael Watts, I get he did great yeah. uh, also. And still, you know, he's still plugging along too. Yeah. So I think uh, one thing, uh, being a South Side guy, that we don't give the North Side guys enough credit on, mm -hmm. I think the work ethic, when you think of you know, Paul Walls and the Chameleonaires and Mike Joneses, Mike Watts. Slim. Slim. Yeah. One thing, if you think about them, those guys work and the body of work still going and going. So you got to give them their credit, you know. I think uh, South Side, North Side, when they ask you, so who would you, if, if they ask the kids, who would you want to be? I think, I think myself, I think they would think Slim Thug. I think he's uh, he's the guy they I think a lot of them but he they really look up to him yeah but Slim Slim was right on that even though he was like with Swish House and the North Side mm -hmm. he still had a lot of South Side love I mean he did the album with ESG which was a big record too yeah and, um, you know so we constantly got Slim he did something with Kiki so mm -hmm. you, you know did a song with uh, Rose so he he was always there that yeah, was zero, man. <laughs> but, uh, my uh, my grandkids, uh, 16, 17, you know, I, I've been telling them, H-Town rap, H-Town rap. And my daughter 
she used to work for us. Mm -hmm. She so she plays it. But uh, the other day he said, "I need to get a copy of Mo City Don." <laughs> Zero. <laughs> so. Yeah. And that was uh that was another record, and what, what was funny too, you know, uh, that record was, uh, got brought to us. Uh, was trying to uh, get us to do it. Mm -hmm. I don't know who brought it to us, but Mike Nice had it, and. Um, I didn't. I passed on. <laughs> well, we, we all passed on a few. So, I I kept hitting some bad ones though. When you think about it, even um, I don't know if you remember the uh, the guy that put out uh, was the group A Ball and MJG. Mm -hmm. He wanted. He, he knew he was going. Not Tony. The um, the other guy. Uh, I forget his name. JB, mm -hmm. the one who went away. And, okay. Uh, he was like calling. He was knew he was going away. And he was like, hey, man, I want you to do it. And I listened to it, and I liked one song on there. Right. Mr. Big, on that first record, Mr. Big. I played that one song over and over again, Rewind, and I liked it. And then the more they kept going, to me, they were a group that they just kept getting better and better. Mm -hmm. And, and, yeah. and I, I liked it. I, I knew 8-Ball a, a little bit. Uh, one of my big experiences was over at his studio one night. Mm. They uh, were partaking a little bit, and I had a hard time getting home. That's <laughs> <laughs> one of my <laughs> once or twice that I ever did that out there with the guys, and and uh, like I say, I had a I had a hard time getting home. Yeah, nah, I, you got to be like me. Right. I'm good. <coughs> yeah, got a Coca-Cola. Uh, uh, well, that's what I—that's what I would usually do, and what I should have done. Yeah. Good, because them guys—that's all day, every day. You can't. Mm -mm. And I, you know, I, the song I remember was—you uh, you remember when uh, the little Kiki, the "Don't Mess with Texas," which uh -huh. was maybe—I don't know—maybe my favorite album out of Houston. Mm -hmm. um, well, the year later. Uh, the jam down guys they wanted to put out uh, they were going to put out a new record and their their single I said what's your single he said Southside I said well that, that was the first record was Southside he said well wait till you hear the remix mm -hmm. and it was uh, Lil Kiki and 8 Ball oh yeah I and they were they it was it was a great record yeah that when you said that don't mess with Texas always still brings this guy's a very soft spot in my heart because I I was axing screw. I said when I heard the uh, pimp the pen, the final mm -hmm. version. I was like, so you got you got him signed, right, screw? Mm -hmm. He said, I'm down with you. He down with me. So we all good. We. All, I said, no, screw, no. You got him signed, and he's like, no. And, and um, I kept waiting and waiting. You got him signed, screw, and he kept saying no. And then finally, me and Eddie was like, we got to try and sign him. And I, I think I came and talked to you yeah. about it, and I was like, I want to sign him, and I, I got him in the car. And I got the contract in my hand. Maze, I don't know if you remember Maze. I mm -hmm. think he passed. He was supposedly representing him, and I was like, oh, I'm too late. And so Kiki's. Rodney Maze? Rodney Maze, oh, yeah. yeah. And um, Kiki's in the back seat of my truck. Maze is on the right. I'm in the driver's seat. And we listening to the, uh, the, the tape. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that's not what I expect because this production sounds like a finished record. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, this pre-production songs? Because I'm thinking like, hey, we're going to sign him. We're going to get to do it. And he said, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, wait. I said, where are you recording it at? Where you recorded this at? He said, oh, Jam Down let me use the studio. And I said, oh, no, 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 no. They're not letting you use the studio. And I called Pat. Uh -huh. And I said, so I'm just actually Pat, trying to sign Kiki. Is he signing you? I don't know if he was or was he was. He was. Not. He, he said, he signed us. And I said, no, that's good enough for me. And I back up. I still had that contract yeah. with his name on it, unsigned. And, and you know, it's just, it's that, crazy. That record, was it uh, Pimp the Pen, Screwed, the Screwed version was uh, just barely screwed. Yeah. Barely, it was great, man. Yeah. <laughs> it was definitely a good record. But it, it just, man, you, you think about it, it I don't know how much of that record would have still been the same, but you think right after coming out three in the morning, uh -oh. it came out with the Kiki. Mm. Mm, uh, mm, that mm, mm. I, I got goosebumps just thinking about it. <laughs> I was like, wow. And and not only that, I mean, I was listening to Kiki's. Yeah, I was thinking about this last album. I think it's one of his better albums. I was I've been riding with. I was like, oh, he's 
Well, I mean, I'm, he's I'm still uh, doing it. I'm proud of Kiki because he was so young mm -hmm. when he started. Um, I, I'm not sure what all the ins and outs were, but I, I'm really proud to see him still out there putting out great music, you know, having a good life. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm Seems real, like you're having a great life. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I'm, prou I'm proud of him. Yeah, Kiki is definitely doing it. and. Um, you know, and he's doing it the right way because to me, it's, he's one of those examples of you think a lot of the guys, they're older mm -hmm. and they still want to do music, but when they're doing the music, it's not a progression. Mm -hmm. But the, to me, the, this album that Kiki did to, after all these albums, it's not the same stuff. I don't feel like it's a, the same stuff. You can tell it's from an older perspective and it's the beats and mm -hmm. you can tell he went to different producers and I think it's a great album, and I actually, up before my little, you know, situation with YouTube, mm -hmm. I was finna do a reaction video to, to it while I was playing it, and uh, I was actually gonna text him and tell him, hey man, I love the album, <laughs> just so he knew, and uh, but I haven't I talked to him, I haven't talked to him in a few years, uh, well, several years, and, uh, but uh, I think probably the last time I saw him, I was doing restaurants, no. and he came in, and I, of course, I got the people to put on Southside and some of the little Kiki music and he, he kind of like that but we had a uh, it was a, our restaurants were Ruggles Green mm -hmm. and uh, we had a, a we had the best chef in town Bruce Molzan best chef in town I remember Bruce and uh, we had a dish it was called pan seared chicken mm -hmm. and he used to they used to spice it was lemony with a little with an Indian spice called zatar mm -hmm. and it was great and so Kiki came in I said Kiki I want you to try this uh, chicken dish. He said, what is it? And I, I said, it's pan seared chicken. And he, he said, well, man, I usually eat fried chicken. <laughs> he said, I, I usually eat fried chicken. And I, I said, well, just, just try it. Just try it. And, and uh, so anyway, they brought the dish. He just took a bite and, and uh, I had to go back to the back. I said, Kiki, and he said, this shit's real. <laughs> and uh, then, then, then right when he was leaving, I, I mean, I was real proud of that. That was the, one of the best chicken dishes you've ever had. And he, mm -hmm. when, when he was uh, walking out, I said, Kiki, what'd you think of it? He said, that's the best shit I ever put in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> he, yeah, he's fun, he's funny. Stuff. Yeah, he is. I, to me, I, I was shocked uh, at the maturity and the growth that you could see, even when, uh, I don't know if you ever saw the, uh, the video of me, him, C-Note, and K. Reno mm -hmm. talking, I was like, Kiki's talking more than everybody. Mm -hmm. And uh, Tell me. he was definitely, uh, uh, you can see the growth. Uh -huh. Even like now, you know, he's definitely, he's growing to something that we can be proud of. I'd be even proud of if mm -hmm. that don't mess with Texas for the on my <laughs> was on big time. <laughs> yeah. Well, that would have been, yeah, that would have been three. Yeah, that would have been. UGK, Lil Kiki, and I could go Scrooge. to heaven happy. I yes. would, that's the number. That's a magical number for me. Mm -hmm. I've been trying to hang, waiting on uh, that third one. 